Hi everyone. I understand there's a little bit of confusion around uh, the course and the course site and the course blog and so I, I thought I'd produce a little video screencast to kind of help you navigate your way uh, through some things. So the first important point is that we're using a Google site as our course site uh, and so in order to be able to edit this because this is a fully editable web page or website with lots of separate pages you need to be logged in with a Google account. You can use your Gmail account if you have a separate one. Your VCU email account is also a Google account. Um, or for those of you who work in Henrico, there's actually a, a trick such that your Henrico address is really a Google address too. But the key is when you come to the, any page in the site, like you see the home page here, um, you'll notice there's nothing up in this area. There's no icon I talked about, a pencil icon for editing. That's because I'm not logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and log in. Way down at the bottom there's this tiny little sign in button. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to log in with my Google address and password. Alright, and I'm going to sign in. And now you'll notice at the very top up here there's two new icons that weren't there before. That's the edit page button and the add page button. Okay, and that's going to show up on any page within this site. Okay, let me just close down some things here to give you a better look. So, over here in, on the side here under Course Pages, that's called the sidebar. You can navigate to any page on this site through the sidebar. Everything here in the sidebar is a link to a page for the course. So, for example, if you click on Assessment, you'll get to a page where it talks about how I think about assessment for this course. Okay? Similarly, if you click on Assignments, it will bring you to a page that lists the assignments, both the ongoing activities up here and then down here, the one-time projects. Now you'll notice that I've built in a lot of redundancy, and that's purposeful. And what I mean is, you can get to different pages lots of different ways. In my emails, you probably notice that I include hyperlinks directly to various pages, to the relevant pages. And on the course site, there's different ways to get to the pages as well. So you'll notice down here in one-time projects, for each of those projects, there's a link to the project site. And I can click on that to get to it. But I want to show you what that redundancy looks like. I mentioned in an earlier email that there's a, a, a gray triangle sometimes next to a page on the sidebar. If I click that green triangle, it's going to open up to sub-pages on the site. So under assignments, there are four sub-pages, one for each of the one-time projects that are shown down here. Okay, so if I click on any of those sub-pages, it's going to bring me to the page for that site. I can click on it, as I just did in the sidebar, or if I go back, I can also get to that same page by clicking down here on one-time projects. Okay? So either way, through the sidebar or through a link on the page, you can get to a particular page. And here's a page that describes this particular assignment that you're going to be doing that will be due on February 19th. For this week, so let me close out the assignments. If you go to Course Schedule, and this is a, a key page, here's the list of every week's activities, every week's topic, with links along the side here under Date to the, the page for that week. So last week we did week one, last week we did week two. I also want to point out the links to the main pages for the module. So we're now in module one. If I click on that, it takes me to the main page for module one, and I can then go from there to week one. Or if I go back, I'm gonna, we're going to go to week two because that's the week that we're in now. And here's the description of week two that hopefully you read already with directions on what you need to do for this week. Included in those directions are a link to a page that I'm asking you to edit together. It's the page called the History of Educational Technology. And you'll notice, I can, I'm going to close this for a second, but over in the sidebar, under week two, there's a, there's a, or next to week two, there's a gray triangle that I can click, and that shows me there's a subpage under week two called History of Educational Technology. I can click that link in the sidebar to get to that page, or again, being redundant, I can click on that link on the page here, down here, under number three in the list. Click on that. It'll take me to this page, History of Educational Technology. 
And you'll note that some of your classmates have already added material to this page. There are three videos on here. There's some text. Michelle added some text. Matt added some text. And you all are going to add information, add resources, artifacts as well. The idea is that by the end of the week, all 19 of you will have added resources, text, videos, images, whatever, such that this page becomes sort of a multimedia um, document about the history of technology. You will have developed it together from your, from your various homes, work, office, wherever you're, you're doing it from. And the assignment basically says you need to add you know, one thing, whether it's text, video, image, whatever. You can add more than one thing. Um, you can edit things. You can delete things that others have put there. You can move things around. Let me show you how to do that. So now that I'm at this page, here's where I start to use that edit page function. So I just click on that icon up here at the top. If you hover over it, it'll say edit page. So I click that. And now I'm in edit mode. And you'll notice it opened up up top here a menu that sh or a set of menus that should look really familiar. This is just like Microsoft Word or Google Docs. And you can now edit this page, which is just like a page you see in Microsoft Word or anything that is familiar to you. Here's text that Matt added. I can do anything with this text. I can highlight it and maybe make it bold. I can change the font size if I want. Okay, and make it bigger. But I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to highlight it again, take away the bold, put it back to 10, ten point, leave it as Matt had written it. You'll notice also that folks have added videos, and that's really easy to do, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom of the page here, and I'm going to move my cursor there, just insert the cursor so that it's here, and I can add text, add text here, or I can insert lots of things. And if you go up top to the insert menu, I go to insert, and here's where you insert lots of things, a text box, I could insert a table of contents, an image if I like, a link to a site. Uh, if you want to add a video though, you just again go to insert and the last choice down here is video. And I notice others have added YouTube videos, so all you need to do is go to insert video and then click YouTube. And it's going to bring up a separate menu here, this m menu in the middle. And all I ask you to do is paste the URL or the website address of the YouTube video that you want to embed. And that's it. You just hit save and it will embed the video directly into the site. So again, I'm going to cancel out of that, but to add a video to the site, literally all you need to do is go to Insert, Video, YouTube, and then paste the URL of the video that you have. Okay? So it's really that simple. It's the same thing with an image. If I wanted to insert an image there, I'm going to say Insert Image, and then there are some images that have already been uploaded to the site, or I can choose a file from my computer. Here in the middle it says Choose File, I click that, and now I can navigate through my computer to find the right image that I want to add. But I'm not going to do that, but that's really how simple it is to add an image to the site as well. So I can add text, I can add images, uh, I can add videos, and it's all done through this insert function here. Okay, so when you're done editing the page, you can go up top and hit save. I should note it auto saves pretty regularly, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. I'm just going to hit cancel up here because I don't want to save what I had just done. So I hit cancel. It warns me, are you sure, are you, sure you want to do that? And yes, I'm sure I want to do that. And so I say OK. All right, so now the page is back to where it was. I want to assure you that um, it's really hard to break <laughs> things um, on computers. And I say that because I want you to really mess about and muck about and try and tinker. And, and that's really the best way to learn this stuff. Fortunately, lots of these services, lots of, a lot of these sites um, build in the ability to return to prior versions. And Google Sites is such a service, and so if you mess up, there's a way to get back to a prior version of something, and, and we can work through that. All right, so I'm going to scroll down because you'll, I noticed that Margaret also did something here, which is she added a PowerPoint file as an attachment. And that's fine. There are other ways to insert PowerPoint files um, using a service called um, slide share if you'd like um, or you can add comments which Margaret has done and comments might be useful for you all if you want to discuss how the pages is shaping up um, if you just want to add a comment 
to the page, that's fine. Or you can insert it as text into the page. It doesn't really matter, but I should point out that what Margaret has done down here is, is fine as well. So in the end, 19 of you are going to collaborate to produce this page, create a page um, that's a multimedia page about the history of educational technology. And it's really quite simple. So again, the key is to make sure that you're signed in through a Google account. And if you're signed in and you're not seeing these buttons up here, this add page or edit page or add page, let me know because it means you're probably not um, listed as a contributor to the site with the right email address. And so just let me know if you if you have logged in through an account that you believe to be a Google account and you're not able to edit, let me know. A few of you have had that problem already and we've we've fixed it. Okay, so again, the, the course site, you navigate through this sidebar. Everything leads to a, a link. If there's a gray triangle, that means there are some subpages you might want to look at. And you can also navigate through links on the site and on my email. One more thing, you'll notice at the bottom of the sidebar, I've produced a direct link to our blog. So that's another way to get there. Just click on that, and it opens up in another tab. It'll open up a link directly to our course blog. And here you see all of your entries in our course blog as well. Okay, so I've built in some redundancy there too, and that you can get to our blog through our course site. All right, so I hope this helps you as you kind of navigate through some uh, things on the course. Um, I know it's all very overwhelming for a lot of you, and that's okay. And I expected that. I get it every semester. You're not alone. Um, I don't know if that helps, but believe me, you're not alone. Any questions? Let me know. You know where to find me.